Hey, hello, I'm back. I'm having too much fun making these little lecturettes, as you can tell. Um, I want to try to keep this one relatively short. This is um, just a couple of words about working on melody number two from the assignment. So this is going to be lecturette 5b. Um, I redubbed the previous one, lecturette 5a. And um, this, for the first time, will involve you writing a non-tonal melody. Maybe it's not your first time, but for the first time in uh, this class and possibly the first time in theory. And you see here, um, I've said melody number two, syncopated, aggressive, and using WT, which is whole tone, or octatonic, starting on a flat. So um, one thing that uh, is, is interesting uh, here, let's say we're going to use octatonic. Um, if I were doing this, I think the first thing I would do um, is I'm going to just write a little note to myself. Um, and I want to think about the different octatonic scales. So I'm going to see if uh, what happens. Can I move this? I would like to move this below if I can. Does that work? Yeah, it does. Okay, so here um, is, remember octatonic 01, uh, we write 01, and we skip um, 2, and we write 3, 4, and we skip 5, and we write 6, 7, and we skip 8, and we write 9, T, um, and then we're back. Um, that's 01, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, T. Um, and you'll notice that the assignment says, um, starting on A flat, and when I look at these integers, uh, because, again, remember that octatonic, um, sorry, remember that the integers are fixed, so 0 is always C, 6 is always F sharp, 7 is always G, 9 is always A, and right in between there is where our A flat or our G sharp would go. So we know that octatonic, this is octatonic 01, octatonic 01, um, is not actually going to work for this uh, assignment. And there's no 8. There's no A flat in that scale. Um, and I also subsequently know that 8 probably does exist in both of the other octatonic scales. So if I want to do octatonic 1, uh, 2, it would be 1, 2, skip 3, 4, 5, skip 6, 7, 8, there it is, skip 9, T, E. And if I wanted to do octatonic 2, 3, I would do 2, 3, skip 4, 5, 6, skip 7, 8, 9, skip T, um, E, O. Oops, that's not no. Uh, so there are my three octatonic scales. I can move these down. Um, and I know that I can choose uh, between octatonic 1, 2 and octatonic 2, 3. And I am going to make that choice purely arbitrary right now. And um, I hope this doesn't seem too uh, mechanistic or cold and non-musical. But I want to, um, we're dealing with integers, right? So it's going to be somewhat non-musical uh, sounding. Uh, the, the talk, not the music. The music will be music. Um, I'm going to arbitrarily choose octatonic 2, 3. I'm going to get rid of the other ones. Um, and I'm just going to leave these integers right here as a little guide to myself um, to, write this, uh, to write this syncopated aggressive melody. And I don't think I'm going to write the whole thing right now. But I might write a little bit. And uh, the things to remember here, and you know what I could do? Um, if I needed to, I could also remind myself D... E flat, F, F sharp, um, A, uh, where was I? Uh, we'll say G sharp. Um, even though I say starting on A flat, G sharp would be fine. A, B, C. All right. Now, if this is if you haven't memorized those uh, integer correspondences where D is always 2 and E flat is three, etc. Um, you can give yourself a little cheat sheet. What I like, what I prefer about the integers is E flat is also D sharp. Um, it's a little bit confusing. 
whereas I know I've got a three and I can, I can use it however I want. So I'm going to reference um, these integers, but you can reference whichever one's going to work uh, for you. And, um, you know, let's, uh, I'm going to start entering just a few notes, uh, but let's see if we can change the sound a little bit. I'm going to go into uh, instruments here and I'm going to choose edit. Um, and now uh, instead of piano, uh, let's see, let's choose a woodwind sound. Um, and maybe a flute, and um, I think that's good. Uh, and then um, I will also go uh, into um, my mixer, if I can find it here, by sound, um, and flute is there, and I'm going to choose master, and I'm going to choose a little reverb. Um, and this is just, you know, so that I can be a little bit inspired. Um, and now, oh, that doesn't sound so bad. That doesn't sound so bad. Um, that's the uh, pitch class 11. Um, and I could uh, start my melody there. And I know I started the last melody on B too, but why not, since I, I did that. Um, and uh, the basic way this works is there are no rules. Now what I like, there are no rules except that you have to use this scale. Um, and what I like to do is just um, throw some stuff up at the screen from that scale, listen to it and respond. Now that might seem um, like not the, the most organic method of composition. You might prefer to take your instrument and improvise or Im improvise vocally or sit at the piano and come up with stuff. But um, it's great to just have some place to start. So I like the idea of um, B. Maybe I'll repeat it at the octave. Um, so I can push the R button to repeat it and take it up an octave. And we said it's supposed to be syncopated. So maybe I tie across the bar line. Um, and I'm going to push R again. Uh, but this time I'm going to turn off that tie. And I'm going to push the left bracket. Um, and now maybe I'm going to have um, a rundown using the octatonic scale. So I'm going to borrow notes from the scale. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot. I forgot. I was supposed to start on G sharp, wasn't I? Or A flat. No big deal. So I'll do it. Um, but you know what? When, when I think of this as a minor third, I almost immediately it doesn't quite have the same uh, feeling to me as an octave. So I'm going to uh, make that shorter. And I'm going to show you a little trick, um, which is actually if you go over here uh, and click this menu, you'll see there's um, an articulation menu. Um, and there are keyboard shortcut shortcuts for some of these. So um, there's a staccato marking. And I like to build that sometimes right into my composition process. So I'm going to put a little staccato right there. Um, and similarly, uh, you'll notice that the um, that apostrophe is the shortcut for um, accent. And when we think of syncopated, uh, we think of uh, we think of accenting weak beats and this is beat two. So that kind of makes sense. Um, and now I'm just going to write uh, run like a little now I, I don't have any rules I have to follow. I'm going to put um, a little run here. And maybe, uh, let's see, I'm going to say F sharp, and uh, I do the plus sign to make it sharp. Um, um, and I'm going to, oh, let's be a little jagged. Why not? A C, up to a C, right? Just dragging notes from the scale. Um, and then an F natural. Oops, let's go down. F natural. Um, and I'm just looking for the other notes that I, I haven't used yet. Uh, oh, I guess there's A. Um, A, and then uh, what haven't I used yet? I haven't used D. There's D, and by the way, I can repeat notes too. I'm just trying to kind of um, make things interesting by, by use, uh, using these different notes. Um, and maybe I will come for a landing on uh, E flat. Uh, right here. So let's E, I hit the minus, and I'm going to hit bracket um, to extend. I'm going to hit comet 
comma, sorry, and R, so it goes into the next bar. I don't know for how long I'll do that. Um, and then I might uh, take all of these um, and hit, I've highlighted them. If I just hit semicolon, they all get little staccato notes. Um, and uh, I've got the beginning of an octatonic line. Uh, I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What do you know? The whole scale. Let's hear what I have so far. You know, I, it's not terrible. Um, I might want to put in a, a dynamic, um, and I don't know how, how responsive I can make this playback, but there's that. Um, let's do it. And I might want to put in uh, like a hairpin. Um, so if I highlight this note and I hit the uh, greater than sign, um, and I can trim that back just a little bit, and then, ooh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa that's weird. <laughs> okay, and I hit this one, and I hit the less than sign, so I have like a little, um, a little uh, hairpin uh, on both sides, um, and then maybe here, uh, on the rest, if I hit the left bracket, ooh, I got a little Facebook, uh, I think that made it into the video, maybe not, um, uh, here, I'm just going to put um, a high F sharp, arbitrarily choosing it. I'm going to tie this over um, to another high F sharp. And using the same notes, I'm just going to do a run now, a run down. And I think um, if I make this, um, if I make this actually longer, tie it one more time. Um, and what I'm going to do here is make this a 16th note. And then if I hit a five, um, oh, that's, that's not what I want to do. I want to make, um, I want to make a, um, an eighth note. I hit five and that's going to give me, that's going to give me a very fast run. Um, oh, I did it again, didn't I? Let's, let's make it a quarter note. And now um, what I want to do is hit five. And what it's going to do is going to create a quintuplet in the space of a single quarter note. Um, so it's going to be a 16th note quintuplet. Um, and here now I can uh, position my uh, cursor on the first one. Hit F. It's going to give me the F sharp. And I'm going to work down. And I'm looking at this scale. And I'm just going to go down. Oops. F. We're going to go F natural, that's the equal sign, um, E flat, um, D, D, and then working back to C, C, and um, here, just to be kind of modern, I'm going to make this go away. Um, from D, uh, I've got C, B, A, um, and let's maybe make a, a triplet. So I'm going to make it in the space of a quarter note here. In the space of a quarter note, I hit three, and I, oh, what did I do? What did I do? Let's see. we got to undo what I did there. I want to make sure I'm, I'm positioned here. I hit the left bracket. I hit three, and I want to hit um, B, A, B, A, G sharp. Um, and I'll tie this over to a G sharp. And... Um, here, I might want an accent here. Um, what was the accent again? Was it colon? No, that's a tenuto. So I'm going to go click this, look back here at articulation to remind myself. Oh, it's apostrophe. There we go. It's apostrophe. And when we move things around, some of these things kind of got out of place. Um, so this is, again, part of this learning curve. There we go. That looks like something. Um, and... Uh, I can um, slur this um, and maybe um, put two staccato notes there. Uh, so I'll say staccato, and then maybe I'll make that uh, a tenuto, which I just discovered, um, and make this longer. Now, the, the important thing to know here is that I'm not really thinking at all. I'm not using my inner ear here. Um, to compose this melody, and that may make you feel mortified. Um, but I know I'm writing an octatonic melody, and I'm drawing freely 
um, from this scale. I'm repeating notes. I'm not having any other notes right now. Um, and I'm just kind of making stuff up. And afterwards, I can respond and decide to make changes. And let's see what I have. Hey, oops, um, it could be worse. So uh, this is just a fun kind of uh, project uh, for you to do. You don't have to get this complicated. Uh, people who know me as a composer know I, I love tuplets for some reason. Um, you can keep it much simpler. Um, the syncopated uh, feeling here comes from these accents on the offbeats. Whether or not this is aggressive, uh, aggressive enough, um, it's hard to say, but uh, I would continue something like that. Obviously, if you're going to be singing the line, um, you may want to do something a little bit more singable, uh, but if you could play this on your instrument, that'd be ideal. Um, I'm not going to give you a demonstration of the recording I failed last time, so I'm going to wait um, to make sure I have that working before I do that again. But um, I hope you have fun and, uh, you know, send me your questions and I'll see you soon. This has been lecturer number 5B.